Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to True Crime Tuesday. The case that I'm talking about today is really insane. I can't believe that it's been so long and nobody has been convicted of this. It's unsolved, which I know is frustrating, but it's just so important that people don't forget about this case because somebody is still out there and I really want to know who did it and the person's family really deserves to know what happened. So this is the infamous case of Keith Ratliff, sometimes known as the FPS Russia murder. FPS Russia is a YouTube channel with almost 6.9 million subscribers, although the channel did stop posting new content in 2016. The main guy on the channel is Kyle Myers. He portrayed a character called Dimitri who was really into firearms and explosives. On the channel they would shoot things and blow things up, that kind of thing. The person responsible for getting these firearms for the FPS Russia channel was 32 year old Keith Ratliff. Keith was born on the 7th of February 1980 and he was a keen gun enthusiast. He also really enjoyed diving apparently a bit when he was younger and he got quite good at it and he was known to be a little bit of a ladies man too. Keith met his soulmate Kelly and after two weeks of knowing each other he told her that he would be with her for the rest of his life and then five months later in 2007 they were married. They did end up divorcing in 2009 but then early 2010 they had got back together and they got engaged again so they were planning to remarry. It's really odd because I'm pretty sure, like I'm 99% sure that his fiance was called Kelly, but I kept seeing on news reports and things saying that she was called Amanda, but I'm, I'm convinced that she's called Kelly. If I am getting that wrong and she is called Amanda, then I do apologize. Please just try and imagine that I'm saying the right name. But I just think from what I could tell online and I'd looked in a lot of places, I'm pretty sure she's called Kelly, so that is what I'm gonna call her. As a person, Keith was very anti-drug. He just had no time for it, he wasn't bothered at all, to the point where he wouldn't even take pain medication if he'd been to the dentist. Like, he just had no interest in any drug at all. He had a lot of different gun licenses and he didn't want to jeopardize any of those by being caught taking any drugs. So he just stayed away from all of that. Keith was a talker. Once you got into conversation with him, you wouldn't be able to get him to shut up. He had a lot of random, like general knowledge and he could just talk to you about anything. He was the kind of person that you'd want to be on your team in a pub quiz, you know what I mean? But he also wasn't scared to get into an argument. He liked to wind people up and get on people's nerves a little bit. He wasn't scared to tell you if something was wrong using all of his random knowledge. Keith started doing some web design work for various businesses and he would also upload silly videos to YouTube, mainly of him with his dog. And then he discovered Kyle on YouTube in 2010. He emailed him and it was backwards and forwards and they decided to meet up and start working together with Keith being the gun expert behind the FPS Russia channel. So the FPS Russia YouTube channel would use a lot of different weapons and a lot of these were illegal in the US, which is where these videos were made, but you just had to have the right licenses to be able to get these firearms into the country and use them. And Keith had this license. It was a type 11, which meant that Keith could import something, modify it, change it, and then sell it on if he wanted to. And as he had the correct license, I'm pretty sure there was nothing illegal going on. He wasn't like selling illegal firearms. He was legit and he wanted to stay that way. Hence why he would stay away from drugs and things, not to ruin his license. If he got proven to be doing anything illegal with guns, then he wouldn't be able to do what he loved anymore. So he wouldn't risk that. So I'm pretty sure that everything was above board with his 
firearms and his licenses. As well as being a behind the scenes producer of FPS Russia on YouTube, Kyle and Keith started up FPS Industries. This combined Keith's love of both firearms and computers, offering viral marketing and quality firearms all from the same place. They set up like an office factory type situation where he would test and develop various different firearms and this was located in Carnesville, Georgia or Cairnsville, Georgia. I think it's Carnesville. Keith stayed there too on the site. I think it had like a little house c-section in it like a kitchen and a bedroom and stuff and he just used to stay there because he actually moved to Georgia from Kentucky. His fiance and their child lived back in Kentucky and he moved to Georgia to be able to set up this business venture with Kyle so he would just stay on site because I suppose it was just easier and then he would be able to look after the factory without having to worry about anything being stolen, I suppose. It was a reasonably new venture, but as far as I'm aware, it was only the two of them that were involved in it. There wasn't any third parties or anything like that. It was just done between Keith and Kyle. Keith was last seen alive on the 2nd of January, 2013 at around 7 p.m. The following day on the 3rd of January, he was found dead in the factory after receiving a single shot to the head. Kelly got a phone call while she was at work and it was from Keith's cousin and good friend, Josh. And he broke the news to her that Keith had been found dead and he used the words they shot him but there is no further clarification as to what that meant but I can't help but think that it's significant that he said they shot him. GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, had a lot of questions for Kelly and Keith's family and friends, obviously anybody who knew him. Like did anybody else have access to the factory other than Keith? Did he have any known enemies or anybody who didn't really like him? Was he involved in anything illegal? Did he have any problems with Kyle at all? Kyle then called Kelly later on that day on the 3rd and she asked him to just explain to her exactly what happened because at this point she didn't really know anything that happened. Kyle said that he and Jeremy Fulbright, who I couldn't find much information about online, he was either Kyle's brother or Kyle's cousin or Kyle's friend. He's like a mystery to me online. I couldn't find anything, but never mind. He said that he and Jeremy arrived at the factory and I'm guessing that they knocked on the door because they assumed that Keith must have been asleep. I'm guessing he didn't come to the door or he wasn't answering. So they assumed he was asleep in there. So they got in somehow anyway. Maybe Kyle had his own key because they shared the business. So he must have let himself in and they see Keith on the floor. They assume that he must have been hit on the head with something and that he was just knocked out. So they go over to the body and they quickly realise that he has been shot in the head. From the limited information that Kelly received, she knew that he had been shot with a gun with a small calibre and it was just behind his right ear. The killer must have come up behind Keith and shot him from behind. Kyle and Jeremy notified the Franklin County Sheriff's Office and they went to the scene to have a look. They noticed that there were obviously a lot of weapons around. Obviously this was his workplace and his job was to like develop and modify firearms. So there were obviously guns around on the property, but the majority of them were locked in a big safe and the gun that was used to shoot Keith wasn't found anywhere around the body or on the property at all. No murder weapon has ever been found. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office then got in touch with the GBI who got them involved in the case so they could look into it further, which is when they contacted Kelly, obviously. Keith's funeral was attended by his family, obviously, Kelly, his friends, Kyle was there with his dad and Jeremy Fulbright was there too. But this happened seven years ago and there have been no suspects. There's been nothing, no arrests. It's just gone completely cold and nothing is happening. There's occasional updates by the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, but not very often. And they never actually met up with Kelly face to face, despite the fact that they were engaged and they had been married before. 
but because they weren't married at the time of Keith's death, it's like they thought that she wasn't important and they didn't need to speak to her. But I just think that the partner of somebody who has been murdered is going to be important. Like, they could know things. If something was a little bit odd or something looked unusual, usually the partner of somebody could be like, yeah, that looks suspicious. He he wouldn't have done that. Or do you know what I mean? Like, I just think that it, they should have met with her and spoke to her in person. I think that's important that that would have happened. But apparently not. It's claimed that Keith had a stripped down gun on his desk. Presumably he was working on that around the time of the murder. He also had a small gun in his pocket as well as his wallet and some change, but his phone has never been found. So it seems likely that the killer took his phone with him and then I think must have taken the battery and everything out of it because there has not been a single trace of activity on the phone since the murder. I also never saw anything about the phone records, so either they haven't been able to check the phone records or there was nothing in them that was interesting in any way. I literally haven't seen anything said about them other than the fact that the phone has gone. Something else that I find super interesting about this case is the fact that the surveillance equipment had been taken. That tells me that whoever did this knew where all of the security cameras were and knew how to get rid of the tapes or the evidence or whatever it is that's in them to be able to do this crime. Not just anybody can do that. Like, I would have no idea where to start looking for a security camera and figuring out how to take the information off it and leave no trace of it. Like, I wouldn't have a clue. So somebody either knew where all of that was beforehand and managed to plan it out so that they could just get rid of it all afterwards, or somebody would have had to have been there for quite a long time after the murder, making sure that they'd got rid of all of these tapes and recordings because any trace of that left over would have revealed the killer so you would have to be super careful so I just think it can't have been a spontaneous killing because you wouldn't be able to just get rid of all of that evidence on the spot just without having prepared to do so. I read as well that apparently the office was like wiped down and there was a big gun safe that was open and some of the firearms from inside were missing and Keith also had a little personal safe as well and that had been opened up and like looked through. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations did a little press information release thing in November 2015. Pause the screen now if you want to read the whole thing because I'll put a picture of it on screen but interestingly they said investigators strongly believe the individual or individuals responsible for Ratliff's murder are known to other people. As such, those potential witnesses should be aware they present a possible continued threat to individual or individuals responsible for killing Ratliff, especially if they fear being discovered or implicated in the crime by these witnesses. Anyone with knowledge of those responsible for Ratliff's murder should contact the police as failing to do so places them at a continued risk of harm. This feels to me as though they have somebody in mind and they're like willing somebody to come forward with information. Like they know somebody who knows something and they're just trying to get them to come forward because people could be harmed by this. Like it's so important that whoever did this or whoever knows something about this comes forward. That is all the information that is like publicly out there about the case. I find that because it's such a huge case, I actually kind of find it quite shocking that there isn't more information. But every article that I went on, it all just kind of repeated the same stuff and didn't go into any further detail, which I'm just not used to. Like, I just found that quite unusual that they have kind of seem to have kept a lot of information back for themselves. So theory wise, to be honest, like legally we have no idea who killed Keith because nobody has ever been under suspicion publicly. Nobody really has any idea. All of the information that I found out about the crime scene was from Keith's family. None of the news articles that I read, and I read a hell of a lot of news articles about this, none of them said that it was Kyle that found Keith's body. And none of them explain how Kyle got in because obviously the GBI will have been saying and asking his family, 
did anybody else have access to the building? And presumably Kyle was the only one that would have had access and he managed to get into the building, no problems. So he must have been the only other one that had access. So I, I just, I don't know. I find that really interesting and weird. Something that a lot of people do think and that I do think makes sense is the fact that the person who killed Keith likely knew him because there were no signs of forced entry or a struggle or anything at the crime scene that made it look like a fight was had or anything like that. It just seemed as though Keith was going about his business as he normally would do, maybe just had his back turned, doing something, and whoever it was, was behind him. Meaning that Keith was comfortable enough to turn his back on the killer and not necessarily feel like he needed to face them. And then that's when the person went up behind him with the gun and shot him just behind his right ear. So he had to have been relaxed enough at the time. It's not like anybody can sneak into a room like that. That's just not possible. Like you would hear somebody if somebody came in and was behind you. I just, I don't feel like somebody could have snuck in and ambushed him from behind. I just... I don't think that's right. I think a last minute fight would have been had, but there was just no sign of any kind of struggle. And Kelly says that Keith was like a really, quite a private person. He didn't just let anybody in, even at their family home. Like she said that there were some family members that Keith would just never invite inside. He would prefer to just chat to you on his doorstep rather than invite you into his house. He just liked to, keep that for himself. He didn't want just anybody coming into his house. So if he's like that with his house, I'm guessing that he's like that with the factory because he was living there too. And he's not just gonna let anybody in to a place where he's probably got very expensive, very unique firearms. He's not just gonna let anybody wander in and chat to him. So Keith must have either let the killer in himself which means he had to have known them and be close to them or they just let themselves in using a key because there was no sign of forced entry. I can't make a video on this topic and not talk about the fact that Kyle could have possibly killed Keith. Obviously he fits into the whole knowing his killer theory and the fact that he would have been able to let himself in because he most likely had a key. I wish I knew whether or not he actually did, but again, I've not managed to find anything about that online. Kyle obviously denies the fact that he killed him. They were friends, they worked closely together. Apparently they had a lot of good things like planned for the future. And the future of FPS Russia kind of depended on Keith because without him, they couldn't get all of the cool firearms and the cool things that they wanted because Keith was the only one that had the special license to do so. So FPS Russia kind of can't go on as it did without Keith. So why would Kyle end that? I'm just gonna let you make your own minds up on that one. Let me know in the comments what you think about that theory because that's one of the main theories that people do talk about. GBI raided Kyle's father's farm apparently but I couldn't find any information about this online, about what happened or why they did that or whether they found anything. I'm guessing they didn't find anything because nobody was arrested or charged or anything like that. It's highly unlikely that this was a drug deal gone bad because I don't think he would have done that at the factory with so many firearms around and he just wasn't interested in drugs. So it's just super unlikely that it's a drug deal gone bad. I really don't believe that theory at all. He also didn't owe anybody any money. So it wasn't likely to be somebody coming round to like collect a payment from him or he wasn't able to pay anybody back money from a loan. So they were like teaching him a lesson. I don't think it would have been that. Apparently he was doing fine. He didn't owe anybody anything and nobody else was involved in his business other than Kyle. So it's not like there was a third party that was mad about something that they owed money to. So I don't think that theory is likely either. Some people think that because Keith was such a gun enthusiast and vocalized that online and on YouTube with millions of subscribers, anti-gun groups, killed him to get him to not be talking about guns anymore. That seems really bizarre because surely an anti-gun 
group wouldn't shoot somebody to death with a gun. Like, I don't know if anybody else has thought about that when they think about this theory. But this is actually a really big conspiracy surrounding this case because people are saying that the government want high profile gun advocates to be like out of the picture and not promoting guns anymore. And it's something to do with the Illuminati, but I was a little bit like lost at that point, like it went over my head a little bit. Another gun company owner died in a car crash. And some people are saying that these two things are linked because they were both gun advocates. So it, like people are killing the gun advocates because of the government and the Illuminati. I don't know. I don't think it's that to be completely honest, but I thought I should probably mention it because some people do think that that is what happened. Keith's family haven't given up in trying to figure out what has gone on. They have suspicions on what they think happened, obviously, and they are just really frustrated that things just have just gone cold and gone silent. And there's so much stuff that I think still should be looked into. They deserve to know what happened to Keith and why he was murdered in the way that he was. They don't know whether he was killed because of a personal vendetta against him or whether it was because he was really into guns. They just have not got a clue what happened. Keith's sister has said that they are just always looking over their shoulder because they don't know why he was killed. It must just be such an awful feeling to have somebody in your family murdered and you have no idea why and you just have to go about your business knowing that a family member of yours was murdered. It's just so beyond horrific. I can't even begin to imagine what it feels like but I just want people to carry on talking about this case. I don't want it to go away. People need to know what happened because obviously it happened in 2013. There was that statement in 2015, which was two years later. I haven't seen anything else come out about this recently, which is just frustrating. I think more people need to carry on talking about it to just make it a little bit more well known again, like have people talking about it again so they can figure out what happened. Kyle went to prison not that long ago actually, he's out again now though. I think it was something to do with drugs, he was in there for a little while, I think it kind of hit headlines that he'd gone to prison and I think a lot of people assumed it was because of Keith's murder but it wasn't, it was something completely unrelated and he's out now so that's nothing to do with it. If you have any theories on this case or if you know anything that I haven't mentioned, this is gonna be a long video so I feel like there probably are bits that I should have said that I haven't said. So if there is anything that you think that needs to be mentioned, please do let me know in the comments. I would love to discuss this case with you guys as usual. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about this case. So give this video a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and turn on the bell for notifications and I will see you in my next one. Bye.